Okay, while we begin with our pre-worship singing together as we prepare to worship the Lord, and I like this song. It speaks about you know, being conscious as we come to the house of God. What are we conscious of? Sometimes you know, we look around, we're conscious of the people who are here, we're conscious of the music that is here, that is playing. You know, it would be wonderful. Don't miss this. Let's be conscious that we're here to worship. And so I like the, the, the song that sings, Here I am to worship. Here I am to you know, you know, give thanks. Here I am to say that you are my God. Well, let this song help us to be prepared for worship this morning. It's exciting, isn't it? Begin the new series, with uh, series of the fruit of the Spirit. Don't forget it, though. <laughs> don't, don't forget that part. With that, add on to knowledge. Add on to faith, further knowledge. And that would be great. Okay, well, let's sing this together as we prepare our hearts for worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, so, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. We're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together one. know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. We're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. That would be a good start. Well, let this song prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. Uh, let, let us do that. And as we do, well, think about it. Let's be conscious of God. Conscious of God reaching out to us. Conscious of God speaking to our hearts. Conscious of God's presence. And that will go a long way when we become even more conscious as we come to, to worship Him this morning. Okay, that's what preparation for worship is all about. Entering a sense of consciousness of worship of God. Let's do that. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lord's house. It's my joy and privilege to lead you in a time of worship this morning. Before we begin, let us come to our God in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you to give thanks that we can gather here at your house this morning. We come to you to pray asking for your grace, that you'd encourage your ha our hearts, and that you'd al also help us offer acceptable worship to you this morning. Pray asking for your help to help us learn from your word later as well. Pray asking that you'd bless this worship service that we're about to have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have come to the end of our theme on the fruit of the Spirit and it has been a good time of learning for me and to see to learn these fruits in depth and to see how they can be cultivated in my own life. As I look back over the last few messages, I appreciate how bearing these fruits is a, a part of my salvation, part of how I can be able to lead a Christian life. And it makes salvation all the more important for me. Not everyone, is, not everyone uh, is born with the. Op not everyone has the opportunity to cultivate uh, good virtues when they are younger. Some, because of their lot in life, may not have had the best upbringing. They may pick up bad habits, and it may affect them along the way. I saw this when I had the opportunity to work at Willington Senior High School as an education assistant. On one hand, they are excellent kids who are the pride of their teachers, always commended and praised. And on the other hand, they are those kids who are deemed troublemakers. And sometimes it's to the point where the teachers uh, end up giving up on them. And it's really sad to see a young child with so much potential um, going the wrong way. Their chance for a successful life is almost over even before they begin. And this is where I appreciate the hope that we can have in salvation, even for young ones. They may have, we may have cultivated bad habits when they are younger. They may, some uh, even have ruined their lives. But God can turn it around. He can give us a second chance in life. We may not have virtues to speak of earlier on, but through our faith, God gives us the opportunity to cultivate these fruits through his help, and we can truly change. The lessons we have learned about the fruit of the Spirit have helped me appreciate the impact of our faith in God and how, how relevant it is in life. With this, the first song I chose was um, To Be God's People from HWC 312. I thank God that we can have hope in life through salvation, and I am challenged as someone who has opportunities to work with younger people as well. I'm challenged to learn to share this hope with others who need it as well. And with this in mind, would you join me in singing our first song, To Be God's People.
you for your singing. Well, I'm thankful for God's salvation plan and the opportunity to cultivate these fruits in life. There is the need to do our part. It is what was shared during our anniversary message, and that is from Second Peter, to give all diligence. Last week's message on the fruit of self-control really stood out to me, and I appreciate the analogy of our faith as an athlete running a race. And personally, there are athletes I admire, and not just because of their skill, but because of their tenacity. They are able to make changes in their lives that, that they may compete in a way so as to win whatever they're competing for. Uh, they, are true, they are truly tempered in all things, as, as the verse said. Like an athlete, uh, we have our own challenges and obstacles that we need to overcome. And the reality of straying from our faith is very real because of worldly desires and temptations. We need the Lord's help to find inner man's strength to be able to say no to these deceitful desires and instead strive to cultivate the fruits that God desires to cultivate in our lives. The last song I chose for us to sing is uh, Be Thou My Vision from the HWC number 32 like athletes but running a race of faith, I am challenged to focus on the Lord, to attain righteousness, godliness, faith, to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit in my own life. Will you join me in singing our final song together? You may be seated. Thank you, musicians. I will pass this time to Pastor Chris. Okay, thank you, uh, Victor. Appreciate that. And um, while we begin a new uh, pulpit theme, a new series of messages, to me that's exciting. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, it takes us two months to appreciate the fruit of the Spirit. 
and then well, hold it there, practice it, and then now we are going to you know, learn about something else, add on bit by bit. Okay, well, the theme is taken from uh, the Gospel of Luke. In fact, the prologue part of it. Well, let's take a look at the Gospel of Luke. Turn to it first, and then we pray, and then we begin. Okay? Well, let's begin with a word of prayer together. Our Father, we thank you that we can have access to the Scriptures. We ask that you would help us to learn how to read it meaningfully, to appreciate the words we read, and then to acquire knowledge of what faith is all about, and to find a greater sense of certainty in what we believe in to be true. We ask that you would bless our time together. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, let's turn to uh, God, uh, Luke chapter 1, and then uh, Luke, this is very much a prologue to the whole gospel of, of Luke, and, and he writes, and he, let's just read this, okay, just read the whole thing. And so he says, in as much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative, right? So, so a narrative is what the gospel is. It's a story, uh, you know, gospel narrative that's uh, different from letter writing. So this is the events uh, of the life of Jesus. So that's the narrative. Uh, many has done that. Now, which have been fulfilled among us. So we will look at uh, you know, Luke's uh, what he records, and he says, this is not just stories, but these are, you know, stories the, with the focus that the Word of God concerning Christ fulfilled. The key word there is the word fulfilled, right? Just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses, and ministers of the word delivered them to us. It seemed good to be also having perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. So this was the person he was writing to. And then verse 4 is where we're going to get base our whole entire theme that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. Now, this is what we're going to look at. Right? Now, we ask ourselves seriously, how many years have we uh, re called ourselves a believer? How many years? And we say we are believers now, if you are new, it's very hard to have certainty because everything is new. There's very little certainty. So, you know, you want to know more that you may be certain. That's normal. We all want certainty in life, isn't it? With anything. But when you first begin in anything, you, you don't have that certainty, right? And so, you, you know, acquire knowledge, you acquire understanding, you acquire experience, that you can say, you know what, I'm a bit more certain about this now. Now, for us, if we say we have been believers for many, many years, perhaps, how certain are we? Oh, that's a good question. How really certain are we concerning the things that we have been instructed to be true, to be trustworthy. Now, that is something we want to embark on to look at very, very carefully. See, where there is a lack of certainty, you know, there are doubts that arise, there are anxieties that would come, there is fear that is there, and we uh, may not cope so well. That we want to be certain that we may be able to cope. 
Right? Why do we keep on pressing the government to say, what's the roadmap? Where's the roadmap? Where's the roadmap to reopening WA, reopening the country? Why do you think that is needed? Not just so people can have holidays, so businesses can have certainty. So, you know, those who are, there is a sense of certainty without, the uh, moment you plan all this, you invest resource, lockdown then you're in trouble. Certainty is a very, very natural thing to have. To have a sense of assurance and certainty. The question is, when it comes to faith in God, honestly, are we certain? <clears throat> right? Well, let me share with you very, very quickly before we go further. We, had a, we have a... We have. <laughs> he's still... He's there and... Uh, you know, Singapore, we have a church. We have a church. Uh, Bethany is that church. Uh, well, we miss them very much, and they miss us very much. And we, you know, they will say you know, we look forward to uh, coming over to Perth, usually around our anniversary. Uh, we have a member, church member, and he had to really be prompted to take his faith with the greater sense of certainty. Now, he's been in church for the longest time. In fact, ever since the church started. So you can be in church for a long time and not have certainty. Now, nobody knows that except you. Right? So you could be there, you could worship, you could be part of the whole thing. When there's no problems that is happening, certainty is perhaps something you don't think about. Now, his profession is he is a senior partner for Ernst and Young Singapore. He's been with the company for 35 years. So there are many things he is certain about, right? He, uh, he heads up the audit team. Now he's retired now. So he's been there and he's, oh, he's a church member, faithful church member. He'll attend worship services and that uh, he will be there. One day, he suffered a, you know, a bit of a discomfort, and then he went to, to hospital. And the doctor did a checkup. Now, he wasn't really thinking too much about it. And they found out that there is a normality in his heart, and he, needed to, and he was told, you need to go for open-heart operation. Now, that made his eyes open up a bit more. What? And then he is told, um, there is 50% chance you may not wake up. Now, that, those are not things you... you know, but the doctor have to be frank with you. And then they make you sign. So don't blame... I told you. Now, this was suddenly he prompted... He, yeah, he shared this openly, so I can share it with you now as one of his testimony. Uh, and he went to Pastor Charlie and he said, Pastor... I need to be certain that with one, I wake up, right? If I don't see the doctor's face, I need to see the face of Jesus. I do not want to see anybody else's face, especially the one with horns. <laughs> Those were his words. I need to be certain. That was it. He has a few weeks to prepare for this operation. And he, you know, as an, remember, this guy's an order. He will ask questions. Okay, I, I, you know, I've been attending church for the longest time. And now, because his life is at stake, let me ask all the necessary I need to be very, very certain. And he became, he asked questions, he raised questions, he comfort, he would talk back and forth. And you know what? He went for the operation. He survived it, I can tell you that now. But he became a very different man. And so we always tell him, you know, not only your heart is repaired, your heart is really repaired. In a spiritual, wonderful sense. Well, one, he takes his health never for granted. He never takes his life for granted. He doesn't take his faith for granted anymore. And you watch and I say, wow, what a different man. When we take something, you know, how, where does it really begin? When you really want to take life seriously, and you really want to take 
faith seriously. Now, this is Luke's goal. He says, I put all these things together, I have researched all these things together, that you may be certain. There may be things in life that we may not be certain of or certain about. But when it comes to faith in God, can we be certain? Now, that is absolutely important. Okay, so there is, this is where we are looking at. And I hope you would take this on board and say, wow, well, I would like to. I don't need to wait until you know, something life-threatening for me to be certain. I would be certain now. We all have our reasons, right? We're going to take a look at Luke's example. Let's take a look at Luke. Well, who is Luke? We're going to read his writing. Might as well get to know him a little bit, right? Now, Luke is really quite, really quite special. The entire Bible that we have is written by every single one of the author that is there is actually Jewish, except Luke. He is the only Gentile author. Now, that's interesting. So sometimes when we look at a person, when, how can a person be, have certainty? Now, I'm not talking about false certainty. I'm not. Because Luke says, having perfect understanding, I can be certain. In fact, I want to share with you these things that you may be certain. It's not feeling certain, right? It's you look at all the things and you weigh it out. Like this man I was talking about, he's an auditor. He is only going to be certain to sign off when he sees all the facts there, all the details there, when he understands this. As a senior partner of a global firm, you don't just sign off in something you are not certain about. Because your, your reputation is on the line. So it's not just feeling certain. You know for sure. So he began to take this approach with his faith. Right? Now, you look at Luke. Do you know what Luke's professional? He is not one, an apostle. Now, that's interesting. He is not even an original disciple of Jesus. He is not Jewish. Well, sometimes we think to be very certain about faith in Jesus, we almost have to be Jewish. To have a full appreciation of the Scriptures, not really. Luke is not Jewish. Well, you know, they were there, eyewitnesses, and uh, I'm not an eyewitness, I wasn't there. Neither was Luke. Well, maybe, well, I'm not an apostle. But today we say that, Pastors, you are certain, and then the rest of us, we don't have to be certain. Mistake. It's your life, right? My life. I'm certain. Are you certain? Remember, we all go the road where we all have to, whether we will meet with our Creator or not. We got to be certain, right? I can help you, point you, and I cannot be certain for you. You've got to be certain for yourself. Now, he's not an apostle. So, who is he? <laughs> now, in Colossians chapter 4, Paul, you know, he doesn't talk about much about himself, but mind you, this is a very special man, very humble man. He is author of two books in the Bible. One, we are reading, Gospel of Luke, right? Which is one of the most detailed account of the life of Christ. And two, the Acts of the Apostle, which is very much traces how the church began and how the church grew. So he's uh, like a historian and a good one. But what was he? His profession. You know what his profession is? He's a medical doctor. Right? 
So sometimes when you look at people who are believing God, we always think science and faith doesn't mix. You might want to read Luke. He is a medical doctor. In fact, Paul calls him the beloved physician in uh, Colossians chapter 4, right? Where Paul addresses his fellow brethren, his fellow workers, those who were Jewish, they, he calls him of the circumcision, and then there's Luke, he, because he is non-Jewish. But you see, not because it's Jew, non-Jew, the point of it all, we can be certain of our faith regardless of these things. Now that to be is always an, uh, a stirring thing. To look at. So that's his, a little bit of his background. Now, the greater challenge is how did Luke have find such certainty in his faith in Christ? How did he find it? Right? And this is what we will be looking at this morning Luke's example. And I want to share with you from what we just read a few things. Okay, let's take a look. Go back to chapter 1, and we read, he says, in as much as many. So there were many people who took their faith in Jesus seriously in those days. Right? They took their faith seriously, and they have taken in hand. See, how do you know a person who really takes his faith seriously? they will take it upon themselves to do something about it. I want to find out. I want to know. So we read, Many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled. Of course, with reference to the Word of God fulfilled, with reference to the Scriptures fulfilled, you can tell a person takes his faith seriously when they pay close attention to the Scriptures. They want to know about the life of Christ that they can set in order. You see, the problem with a lot of people is they only know bits and pieces. A little bit here, a little bit there, something they heard along the way. With bits and pieces of information, you, it, it doesn't do much. You know, as a doctor, you do not want to go to a doctor who only have bits and pieces of information. Well, let me treat you. Well, give me a moment. And then he is flipping through uh, the doctors for dummies. You, you, do not, you want to go to one who is well-versed, understands his field, and they can set, they are meticulous. You, you, he is certain, you feel certain too. There we go. You know, with reference to faith, there are many. And you know, this is what Luke did. He acquired knowledge from all the sources that were available to him. That's a good start. What is available to you? First, we need knowledge, right? That's where you start off. You are uncertain about something, please go and find out. You know, to today, there are people who do not want to take up the vaccination. And you really scratch your head and puzzle. What is wrong with you? Seriously. There are those who say, I would rather lose my job. You are not a hero. And I'm going to pray that God will provide for me. Really? You seriously, please find out. Read, don't, don't, but please, okay, I'm reading up all the section on the anti-vaxxers. You just feel your, your negative thoughts. Okay, I, I must tell you this, you know, you look at it, I read all, across all sections. And sometimes, you know, people will send me stuff, you know, see, it's, it's bad stuff. And then just check, all you need to do is Google it, and then this is fake stuff. It's hard to be in a world today to find great certainty because there's so many things out there. How can you be sure the thing you are reading is true? How do you know you are certain? I like Luke's approach. This is medical doctor approach. He has many sources, not just one. 
One, he will talk to the many who take their faith seriously, who take their work seriously. Don't talk to people who, yeah, they're not really serious. See, many. Now, number two, of course, he has access to these people. We don't. Uh, he went and interviewed eyewitnesses. Those who were there from the beginning, eyewitnesses. Three. So, two. Th the third group of uh, uh, information that he can uh, get knowledge from is, he says, and the ministers of the word delivered them to us. There we go, us. So who do you have? Do you have resources? Come on, we have so much resources today. It's a question of whether you want to access them. We may not have eyewitnesses, living ones anyway. We got dead ones, but they have written down and they're in the scriptures. Great, at least we have access to that. But we have other things. We have the scriptures. Do we have ministers of God's word? People who you know, have given their life to teach the Lord's word, to explain the Lord's word. To Do we have them? You cannot say none because at least you've got one staring at you right now. <laughs> but the question of whether you want to have, you know, I want to have access. But I'm not the only one. There are many, I'm sure. Right? Bethany, being a bigger church, they have a whole team, a pastoral team. That people, they are ministers of the word. And, you know, it's a question of how certain do you want to be? How serious do you want to take your faith? Do you really want to have a strong faith? Do you really want to have a faith you are so certain you could share of it with a great sense of confidence? That's what bearing witness. But if I am not certain, I... Yeah, I, you, you, if I share my faith, you ask me a question, I'm stuck. I better not share my faith. That was me when I first was exploring Christianity. I was excited but scared and uncertain because I'm just, you know, not sure. If people ask me about my faith, about the Bible, I would be stuck. But I did something about it. Same. There's the scriptures. You know what? I'm going to read. They thank God for ministers of the word, I am going to learn. Well, let's examine, study the life of these eyewitnesses who were there, the apostles, right? They were I study their writing. And when we have access, we do something about it, we acquire knowledge, it's going to help. See, you got to do your part. It's not about praying for certainty. Okay, I pray, God, give me certainty. <laughs> You don't read the Bible, you, you don't learn, you don't go understand further. How would you ever? So we must look at the example here of Luke. Now, let's go on further. Now, remember, all the resources available, can you acquire knowledge? And there is much. It's up to you. You can always say, Oh, I'm so busy, I've got no time, I've got, you know, I've got a job, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. They're just excuses, if you're very honest with yourself. At the end of the day, you have to do something about it. We all are given the same amount of time. This is a full-time doctor who is able to know his faith so well he can write a gospel. Now, that is pretty outstanding. Right? It's a question of whether you want to or not. Used by God to be able to bless many hearts. This friend called Theophilus, we don't know who he is, but wow, I would like to be him, to have a friend like Luke. To be a great blessing to this friend. Now, here's the second thing. Right now, we read in verse 3, he says, it seemed good to me. You see, it is a good thing. You know what? It's a good thing to have this certainty, I, it's a good thing to s look at the people who have taken their faith seriously, right? In as much as they have done this, it seems good to me also. Rather than they take their faith seriously, but you know, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm inspired for those by those who have taken their faith seriously and done something to do something about my life. That's how Luke began. 
And so he said, it seemed good to me also now, having had perfect understanding of all things from the beginning, to write to you an orderly account. Well, let me explain this a little bit. He acquired perfect understanding. Now, what it is not is that he has understood everything and there's nothing to learn. Of course not. Well, Victor is doing a PhD in uh, his field in bio field. And I, I, you know, from time to time, I will talk to him about his research and his dig. And, you know, I, and you know, it's a lot of work. There's so much he doesn't know. He's only doing one little part. He's going to spend four years studying one little part of a bigger picture. Hoping to... Nah, better not, I'll let him share it. I'll be. <laughs> but he's doing good things. <laughs> Hoping to, you know, sort of byproducts of, of eucalyptus and, and turning it into biofuel. Of course, the details is how. Right? It's not... You, got, you know everything. Yeah, far from it. Now, the word, the idea of having perfect understanding is actually the approach. He has investigated, it's like investigative work. It's searching through every bit of information, knowledge, very carefully. Well, that's what the police did, isn't it? And they found this little girl, Cleo Smith. That was a, what a, you know, that was a, woke up in the morning, it was my birthday, and what a wonderful birthday wish that is. There's a little girl, she's alive, and they found her. And they, the police will tell you, it is hours and hours and hours of police grind, searching every information possible, every clue, every knowledge, filtering through, every eyewitness interview. Now, what they did, uh, as well, and they talk about phone towers, right? I don't know whether you read up or that thing. Phone towers, that one I can connect because my background is telecommunication. And they, I, I know what they did because every time we pass through, actually our numbers are transferred over to Telstra and they actually keep the number. It's called a handover thing. And they literally trace all the information to a location. They use phone towers, they use eyewitnesses, they use drone, they even search rubbish bins to find, to piece together what happened, how did this person, where is this person. If only we would find Jesus in the same way, you would find him. This is what Luke did. He evaluated, he didn't just listen. Okay, I, I listened to a message, it was very good, there's some understanding. He, he said, okay, let me, let me search. Let me search the scriptures. Let me interview, uh, ask questions, eyewitnesses. You see, Luke's gospel account, he even have the parentage of John the Baptist, which is in none of the other gospels. He could he would interview, he would put this information he would even have information about Jesus when he was 12 years old, how he grew up. It would tell you this man did extensive searching, and he says, put it in order, not bits and pieces of information. I want to know my faith so well, from start to end, I can place it all down. And that's what he did. I wonder any of us would do that. And this is what he did. At Dale, he says, having it good to me, having this information, having this knowledge, having perfect understanding of all things from the very first, I now write to you an orderly account. See, a historian must be certain of his facts. That's what he did. He wanted to make sure those things are trustworthy, are true. Being a medical person, now, this, mari this cannot be explained by science. This cannot be even explained by a physician. What is this? Virgin birth. How do we explain this then? Fulfillment of the scriptures. Is there a different approach? Because a trained doctor is trained in a certain way. 
Now, yes, I'm a trained doctor, but now I need to look at it in another way, on a standpoint of God and the Scriptures. When God brings this word, He fulfills it. Now, let me understand fulfillment. So that's what he said. Many have taken, what is it all about? The things that have been fulfilled among us would tell you his careful study of the scriptures. Right? So what do we have? One, all the resources available, he will acquire knowledge. From books, from pe people, wherever. Right? Two, his personal, okay, I mean, let me sort it out. Let me set it in order. Right? The scriptures, all the knowledge that I can find, and I put it in, in, in order. And then he says, to write to you an orderly account that you may be certain. But he's got to be certain first before he helps another person be certain. Right? Now, we come to one more thing. And this perhaps is uh, to him as he goes through this helped him. And we turn to chapter 4. And this is none other. As you read, as he studied, there are many who took their faith seriously. He may be encouraged by them. They would be Peter. They would be Paul. But as he looked at what they were saying, remember, where did he bring him to? The person of Jesus himself. Now, here is this fourth way. He looked at the example of the Lord Jesus Christ and how Jesus was certain. Right? And we talk about faith. What is it? Faith in what? For Luke, faith in the Word of God, fulfilled. And all that God say concerning a Messiah, a Savior who would atone our sins and bring us into the kingdom of God, restore us and give us new life. Now, where can I go back to the Scriptures? What God said fulfilled, right? Now, take a look at with reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the certainty that Jesus had inside him. What can we, who can we learn from? We learn from others. We learn from others. So that's what Luke did. He would learn from Paul. He would learn from Peter. He would learn from the many. And above all, he learned from Jesus himself. Take a look at here is Jesus. Okay? And in chapter 4, we read concerning these things. Things that have been fulfilled. What are some of these things? Now, let's take a look. In chapter 4, verse 16, we read, uh, you know, this is Jesus. He came, to Naz he came to Nazareth, which is his hometown. Right? That's where he was brought up. Now, look at this very carefully. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. What was he reading? They was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And he read from this book. Right? Now, you look at that. Now, let's read through this. And then the Spirit of the Lord, what did he read? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is a, a prophecy concerning the Messiah. And here Jesus read this portion, find this portion. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's what the Messiah would do. To proclaim liberty to the captive. Right? To set people free from their sin to set people free from the fear of death, now, to recovery the sight of the blind, to open eyes, literally, that we may see and know God, set at liberty those who are oppressed, right, by sin, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. 
Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and then sat down. And we read, the eyes of all the people there were fixed upon him. Wow. How do we read the Scriptures? How did Jesus read it? With tremendous certainty. Do we read with certainty? Or we read, whether this is true or not, I don't know. We really believe in what we're reading. See, it's not mentioned here, but when Jesus read, how do you read? First, you've got to be familiar, right? It's part of your custom. What is your custom? His custom is going to the synagogue, the place of worship, reading the Lord's Word has become so part of his life. When we are not familiar with the Scriptures, we cannot read with certainty. So when I hear people read, is there certainty or no certainty? But listen to a person that is familiar with the Scriptures, that knows the Scriptures, that believes in the Scriptures, they read very differently. Certainty is there. When Jesus read this, there was absolute certainty. And then he said to them, watch, he said to them, this day, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That is certainty. You not just read the word of God with certainty. You know, as you speak about it, as you know, you know, this word is fulfilled. Now, is it fulfilled already? Not, not yet. He hasn't done all those things. He's just beginning. But it is, I'm going to fulfill it. Now, that is tremendous certainty. You see, as Luke began to look at the life of Christ, studied what he said, talked to people, and when people share about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he said, he sees the example of Christ and he must put this account there. You look at Jesus, the certainty that was there in the Word of God, it is to be fulfilled, and it is fulfilled today. Are we certain about the fulfillment of God's Word? Now, do we even believe in the fulfillment of God's Word? And what God say in the Bible will happen. And to a lot of people, they are, first, they don't know it. Two, they are uncertain whether it will be fulfilled. Well, let's look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's really look at it and say, can we, like Luke, come to a place where we can be so certain? First, you've got to make it your custom. Is it your custom to come to the house of God to read the Scriptures? We've made it our custom all these 27 years. The main feature of our worship service is to read the Lord's Word. You notice? Right? We make it our custom as a church. We make it our custom personally. Well, this is what I sought to do. When I first started, I was not familiar with the Bible. Not familiar with where anything was. The Old Testament, New Testament, I wouldn't be able to turn to it in any speed. I look at Jesus they handed him the book of Isaiah. Now, one, there's no chapter, there are no verses. There are over 60 chapters. You know, you trying to find this particular passage. If you don't know the book, you wouldn't even know how to find it. You will be still fumbling, and everybody's eyes are really on you. When are you going to read? To, he handed a book, to open the book, to find the passage, to read from it. You have made it, you are, you're familiar. And I want to encourage you, right? All of us, young people, learn to be familiar with the Scriptures. At youth worship, I'm reading Genesis with them, first book of the Bible, learning lessons with them, with the great desire of helping them to learn how to be familiar with the Scriptures. Can't do it yourself, let's do it together. Let's do this together. So they said, well, we all got exam, got this, got that. And I, I said to them, now, let me, you can even come to church to study. We'll be happy to open up the church. 
You want to come earlier? We will study and then spend one hour reading the scriptures at you worship. That's all throughout the whole week. You still can't do that? Then look, you have every resources given to you. And even that you can't make it, then there's nothing else we can do. There's really nothing else we can do. See, our hope is for the next generation, that they will grow to not only read God's Word, but to greet it with certainty of faith in God, in love for God. Like this week we read and we look at Psalm 1, the man who delights in the Lord's Word is blessed by God. Of course. For all people, not just young people, for those you know, you've been in church for a long time. Please don't wait for a, the doctor scenario to come in. Until you're on your deathbed, I better be certain. Don't be certain right now. And what a difference that's going to make in life. Okay, so well, let's take a look at this. Pray with a great sense of certainty. Reading the scriptures with a great sense of certainty. Is that possible? We look at Luke. Start with faith, genuine. Then develop this faith. Then learn to read the scriptures. Learn to say, well, let me have knowledge. Not bits and pieces until I can really set in order. I look at the life of Christ from the start to the end and I can see it. I know it. I believe in it. And you know what? Fulfill it. That is exciting. There is Jesus' example. Today, this word is fulfilled. For I like that certainty. And like Luke, I would like the same kind of certainty in reading the Scriptures. Not just read it, but to truly believe in it with a great sense of certainty. True, trustworthy, it will be fulfilled. Okay, well, may that be our challenge as we begin this series of study. Okay, well, let's pray together. Our Father, we pray that as we prepare to partake of communion, may we be challenged by the example of the Lord Jesus Christ all over again. We look at Luke and how he began as a Gentile believer, as a medical doctor, and yet he took it upon himself, like the many who did this, to know his faith well, to grow in understanding, to even be able to set an orderly account. We pray that we will be encouraged to do the same, that we would have that skill to be able to share our faith with a great sense of certainty too. First, we've got to find this for ourselves. We pray that you would bless this series of studies that as we learn along the way, May we become even more certain about what we have come to believe in to be true. We pray for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, let's prepare ourselves for communion. Next generation. And how do they <laughs> become certain? Well, one, teach them, learn, but you've got to experience it. When I first started out in ministry, I was uncertain of many things. Uncertain whether I will succeed. Uncertain about what would come out of this. Uncertain will the church grow. With so many uncertainty, but that drove me to find that certainty of my faith, the work that God has given me to do, the life that I live, well, finding certainty in or beginning with faith then let that affect every area of my life. Every area of my life. In the way I would live my life, in the way I would look at life, every area. And so we, we include the younger ones here, and uh, you know, I'm older than them, then they can be called younger ones. <laughs> if they're older than me, I cannot call them younger ones. <laughs> but they are, you know, you, uh, and, you know, let them learn with every experience of ministry, that they may be certain. So when Jesus said to his disciples the words that he did, right, as we come to the Lord's table, and he said, this is my body, 
you know, uh, the bread symbolically representing his body laid down for you, broken for you? Did they really understand all those things with certainty? No, they observed. They listened. They experienced. And later on, that word held close to their heart. Later on, as they believed in it, it became, they grew in certainty. It's the same thing for us as well. So what we have heard, what we learned, well, let me, let me find this certainty of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, well, think about that as we come to the Lord's table. Let's renew our faith in Him. Okay, then we're going to sing together this hymn that is chosen as we have uh, you know, the elements passed around. Okay, this little pre-packaged uh, thing here. So you've got to carefully peel off the top layer, and that's the uh, is like symbol of the bread. And then another layer is the symbol of the cup. Okay, well, we are going to sing together this verse. And let's begin here. Begin with faith. In God, do you really believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you really believe in God that He can hear and answer prayer? Then make this prayer. Lead me to Calvary. Okay, well, let's begin here. We're going to have the cup passed around. of my life I crown thee now thine shall the glory be lest I forget thy born crown brow lead me to Calvary lest I forget Gethsemane Lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou was laid, tenderly mourned and in robes of light array garden he will thou slay lest I forget Gethsemane lest I forget my agony lest I forget my love Calvary. Let me like Mary through the gloom. Yes, I fall.
let's take a bit of time to peel off the first part if you've not already done so. Okay, well, let's partake of the bread together prayerfully. Our Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. The profound words that he said, even as he spoke of his life as bread laid down, broken for us. And then later on, as his blood, as a cup of the covenant to seal that covenant, for us. Help us to think and to ponder over these words that Jesus said and let there come a greater sense of certainty in the faith that we have in him and the salvation that he has given to us. That we are certain of our salvation with every experience of partaking communion together. We ask that you would hear this, our prayer, and bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, while well, we take the next part of that, okay. all right, carefully. Right. Then uh, here's the cup. Well, let's partake this together. Our Father, we pray once again as we partake the cup, help us to cherish our faith so much more. Help us to renew our love for the Lord Jesus himself. And we would do our part that we may grow in certainty to share this faith effectively. Help us to make no more excuses. Wash and cleanse us. We have every reason to have a faith that is strong, solid, and certain. We ask that you grant us your grace to do this. We ask for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, hang on to this, and then we will dispose of it later on, right? Okay, good, thanks, guys. And uh, we're going to conclude our worship service with singing. One more hip together. This is a wonderful hip to sing. And this is what certainty is all about. Okay, I know whom I have believed. Okay, well, let's rise and as we turn, I, I have to, I'll turn to the hymnal. <laughs> turn to the hymnal and it's projected there. So let's sing. And yeah, the, how wonderful it is to be able to say, you know what, I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he had made known, nor why, and why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. It's not that there is total ignorance about this. It's just how great and grand that grace really is. You just almost, why would God do this? You're so moved by the awesomeness of God's wondrous grace. You just feel so unworthy. Now, look at this pic. But I know whom I have believed. That's the Lord Jesus. That he, and persuaded, that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Remember this. A strong faith is not strength in ourselves. It's strength in it's believing in a God who is strong and can do all these things. A great faith is not us, is a believing in a great God. That's what it is. I know whom He is able, and we can be certain, become persuaded, become convinced from knowledge to understanding to conviction to persuasion to saying certain now certain. I can really believe with great certainty. That would be wonderful. That would be a wonderful Christmas gift this year. Okay, well, let's sing this together. I 
I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he had made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the Word, creating faith in Him. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I committed unto Him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with But I know whom and I have given and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I permitted unto him against that day. Let's ask the Lord to bless us before we go from here. I'm going to give to you the Lord's benediction, which, which is a prayer of blessing. And now may this great God of ours, whose word is from everlasting, whose word is fulfilled and will be fulfilled, give to us a greater sense of certainty in our faith and in our life. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ enable us to do our part to acquire knowledge, to obtain understanding, to become most convinced of the truth that we have been instructed in. May the Spirit of God enlighten us and bring this to pass, having His Word fulfilled in our life, that we may bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would bless what we have committed truly unto you against that day. To the glory of the Lord, in his name we ask this blessing. Amen. Please be seated.